Hey everyone, today as we break down another bad theological idea, I'm going to start with a passage that's often associated with that idea, from Romans 9. Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one object for special use and another for ordinary use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience the objects of wrath that are made for destruction? And what if he's done so in order to make the riches of his glory for the objects of mercy? which he's prepared beforehand for glory. So today we're talking about this idea that God creates some people destined for heaven and some people destined for hell. It has nothing to do with who they are or what they do. It's God's choice even before they're born. And so in that Romans passage, it's the objects of wrath and the objects of mercy. And those who take this view, they, they emphasize God's sovereignty and God's freedom, right? God can do whatever God wants, even if you think it sounds terrible, because it's all to make known his power. Uh, to use a parenting metaphor, as we're doing, if I torture one of my kids in order to show the other kid how much better they have it, you'd call me a monster and put me in jail, right? And yet, somehow we think that's okay for God. Uh, it also fails to notice that this passage specifically is actually, it's a rhetorical question. He's saying, what if? And if you follow the argument, it actually goes to chapter 11, where Paul concludes by saying that God will have mercy on all. Right? So he, even Paul doesn't believe this. Um, creating somebody just to burn them forever is horrific, and it is ungodly. And if you feel that way, then you're probably right to feel that way. The main reason to worship God is not because of power. Uh, you know, if that's the case, then God is, the God of the Bible is no different from Odin or Zeus. We're just saying that our God is a little bit more powerful than those gods. We believe that the God Jesus proclaims is fundamentally different. That the God Jesus served and loved is not a God of power or of of freedom, but is a God fundamentally of love. See, power is controlling, right? It would decide ahead of time who goes where and forces everything into some predetermined plan. But love willingly gives up control. It willingly gives up freedom, right? I'm not as free now as I used to be because I have kids. There are certain things that are just not an option anymore. But I chose that out of love. That's what love demands of me, and I'm actually, most of the time, happy to do that. Uh, love lets others choose instead of choosing for them, even if we may think it's not the best choice. And love does try and persuade others. It does pursue them, but it never coerces. God is not a control freak. Even though, honestly, there are some situations that I wish God would take a little more control over. But we trust that if God is love, then all of this is moving towards love. And that God's mercy truly is for all.